Oh, I think this is it, Bob. I think this is it. That's H, isn't it? That's H, right? I can't see from here. Oh, yeah, it's just squeezing <laughs> in. Yeah. My name's Robert Graham, right? And my father's name was Herbert John, right? In the family of the tradition, that one, one family would be Herbert John, and the next one being born would be Herbert James. The generations. The generations. So he was Herbert John, and my brother was Herbert James. Lucky I wasn't the first one to be born. Um, he was one of five. He was the eldest son. So he more or less got all the work to do. There was one, two. How many? Two boys? No, yeah. only, only your father and... Charlie. Charlie, yeah. Two boys and three, three girls. girls, yeah. Well, my name is Gillian Red and... Uh, it was my father-in-law that came to St Anne's and uh, he was always talking about it, you know, I suppose the older you get you go, go back to your school days, don't you? Well, it was back in the early 1900s, wasn't it? Yeah, he must have come about 1908, 1910 and he left at 1912. That's about all I know. Mm -hmm. He used to walk three miles here and three miles home every day, living at Goodley, which is three miles. And uh, imagine that, coming to school, walking three miles and walking home. Yeah. Uh, on his first day here, coming up, up the steps, eventually the boys set aboard him and, and threw him over the wall. And that was no go area to go on the grass and eventually well he got caught well, although he saw on the teacher or somebody he got reported and he came in here and he had the cane the first day he arrived so he didn't appreciate that very much <laughs> but i expect he'd done it to people after him i don't know <laughs> and we never used to walk through this churchyard together without he reminded me that that was the wall they chucked him over well, we, we come in here as and when um, because of the memory of him. And if, if it's open, sometimes we find ourselves coming in here. And there was somebody similar to yourself in charge here one day and got talking. She said, oh, I've seen that name on, on a desk. And uh, she, she guided us there, didn't she? Yeah. Um, it was, ex well, exciting, if that's the word. <laughs> yeah, it was, oh no, just took me back. <laughs> It does now, just seeing that there now, I think, goodness gracious. He did this, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. I think that they sat at these desks, look, one here. With all the ink One, well, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, not much space was there for, for books and things that they have today in schools, is there? Well, they had one book in them days. He must have had some good grounding in here the two years because, I mean, to do what he's done on his own. So whatever they taught him in here, it obviously put him in, in he good... Yeah, you know, he used to give his own books, you know, when he reached business. And they were... I still got them home, actually, so... Perhaps I should go... Self-day work, two and six, you know. <laughs> and Eight to... hours, two and sixpence. Well, with respect... The Rids thought that they were the bee's knees and they were quite well off as well and they always had to be one step of everybody else. He'd, his granddad was the first person to have a car in Goodley and things like that. So I would imagine it was pride I that know. he sent him here, but that's the sort of impression I get because I, I knew Bob's aunties really, really well and I used to hear things from them and the impression I got that, you know, they did have money, so... He used to get homework to do, and he was struggling with it one night. And his father, you know, so he was. He said, "What's the matter, boy? What's the matter with you, gruff old chap?" Oh, he said, "I got this French." He said, "And I can't get on with it." French? He said, "If I'm paying for you to learn French," he said, "Tell him you'll finish the end of the week." <laughs> 